in the haunting stillness of Echo Beach, a family seeks a peaceful vacation at a secluded beach house, only to find themselves ensnared in a chilling legacy. The ghostly echoes of a tragic shipwreck loom nearby, casting a sinister shadow over the waters. As eerie occurrences unravel, they uncover a dark connection to their own past and a vengeful spirit demanding a harrowing sacrifice. Dive into this spine-tingling tale where the line between the living and the drowned blurs and a family's love faces the ultimate test against the restless souls of the deep. Are you brave enough to uncover the secrets of Echo Beach? Chapter 1 Arrival at Echo Beach The Anderson family's car wound its way down the serpentine coastal road, the sea stretching endlessly beside them, glimmering under the afternoon sun. After months of relentless work and school schedules, the secluded beach house at Echo Beach promised a much-needed retreat. As they approached their destination, the car turned onto a narrow path, shrouded by overhanging in trees that whispered secrets to the ocean breeze. The path opened up to reveal a quaint, two-storey beach house, perched like a lone sentinel overlooking the sea. Its weathered wooden exterior and wide, welcoming porch spoke of years witnessing the ever-changing moods of the ocean. Wow! gasped Emily, the youngest at twelve, her eyes wide with excitement. She was the adventurer of the family, always ready to explore and discover. Her bright red hair, usually a fiery cascade, was tied back in anticipation of beachside explorations. Beside her, 16-year-old Alex was engrossed in his book, but looked up to survey the house through his glasses. A quiet, thoughtful presence, Alex preferred the company of his books and music, often lost in his own world of melodies and words. Sarah, their mother, shared a smile with their father, Mark, as they unloaded the car. A high school teacher, she had the summer off, but Mark, a software engineer, had taken a rare break from his hectic work life. Mark's strong, reassuring presence had always been the family's anchor. As they entered the house, the interior revealed a cosy living space, a blend of rustic charm and modern comfort. Large windows framed the breathtaking view of the beach, inviting the outside in. The beach house, isolated from the nearest town, offered a tranquility they had all craved. There were no neighbours for miles, just the endless expanse and the rhythmic sound of the waves. This is perfect, Mark declared, wrapping an arm around Sarah. No emails, no calls, just us and the sea. The family spent the rest of the afternoon settling in. Emily and Alex claimed their rooms, their excitement palpable. Sarah unpacked the kitchen, already planning meals that would bring them together after days spent on the beach. As evening approached, the family gathered on the porch, watching the sun dip below the horizon. The sea turned a dark blue, almost black, and the first stars appeared in the twilight sky. It's beautiful here, Sarah said softly, a sense of peace settling over them. But as the light faded, a faint, almost imperceptible sound drifted on the breeze, a distant, mournful singing, like a lament lost in time. The family glanced at each other, a hint of curiosity in their eyes. Probably just the wind, Mark said with a reassuring smile. But as they turned in for the night, the sound lingered in their minds, a whisper from the deep, calling out to the unknowing visitors of Echo Beach. Chapter 2 Echoes on the Shore The sun's early rays filtered through the curtains, gently rousing the Anderson family from their deep, undisturbed slumber. Mark was the first awake, feeling more refreshed than he had in months. He padded softly through the house, intent on brewing a pot of coffee when he stopped abruptly. There, on the wooden floor, were wet footprints, trailing from the front door through the living room and disappearing into the hallway. The prints were small, like those of a child, and inexplicably, there was no sign of water anywhere else. Puzzled, 
He called Sarah, who came downstairs with Emily and Alex. They all stared at the mysterious footprints, their relaxed mood from the night before giving way to confusion. Maybe a window was left open and a stray animal came in? Sarah suggested, though the idea seemed far-fetched. Unable to find an explanation, they decided to shake off the odd occurrence and head to the beach, looking forward to a day of sun and relaxation. The beach was a pristine stretch of golden sand, with the ocean stretching endlessly before them. In the distance, the skeletal remains of an old ship protruded from the water, its timbers worn and battered by time and tide. Look, Dad, what's that? Emily pointed excitedly at the shipwreck. Mark gathered the family around and began to recount the tale, a local legend he had read about before they arrived. Many years ago, he began, his voice taking on a somber tone. A ship called the Sea's Lament was caught in a terrible storm. The captain tried to navigate the treacherous waters, but the ship struck those rocks out there. He pointed to a jagged outcrop, barely visible above the waves, and sank, taking all aboard with her. They say the crew and passengers never found peace, their spirits trapped forever, reliving that fateful night. The story sent a chill down their spines, the haunted shipwreck, casting a shadow over their sunny day. The family tried to brush off the eerie tale, spending the rest of the day building sandcastles, swimming and enjoying a picnic. Yet, the image of the shipwreck lingered in their minds, a silent sentinel watching over them. As dusk fell, they returned to the beach house, tired but content. Sarah cooked a hearty meal, and they all sat down to eat, sharing stories and laughter, the morning's mystery temporarily forgotten. Later, as Alex retreated to his room, he was startled to find his bed soaked, as if drenched by seawater. The smell of the ocean was strong, and the sheets were cold and clammy to the touch. Mom! Dad! He called out, panic edging his voice. Mark and Sarah hurried upstairs, equally baffled by this new, inexplicable occurrence. They changed the bedding, trying to rationalize the situation. Maybe the humidity had caused condensation, they suggested, though the explanation felt hollow. That night, as they settled into their beds, an unsettling feeling hung in the air. The ocean's whisper seemed louder, more insistent, as if calling out to them from the depths of its dark, unending expanse. It's time for a quick scare break. As we linger in these shadowy realms, a small favour I dare to ask. If my tales of terror bring you thrills, do not let our journey end here. Hit like, subscribe, and join our dark congregation. I must extend my deepest, most sinister, thanks to those souls brave enough to support our chilling journey. Your contributions, kindred spirits, are the lifeblood of our channel. They help me continue to craft the haunting tales that send shivers down your spine and keep you awake at night, pondering what lurks in the shadows. If you too find yourself captivated by our chilling chronicles and wish to help the channel, consider clicking the thanks button below. Your support, dear viewer, is not just a contribution. It's a lifeline that allows me to continue weaving these terrifying tales just for you. Let's embrace the darkness once more. Let's get back to the shadows. Chapter 3 Whispers in the Night The children were asleep, and Mark and Sarah settled on the porch with a couple of drinks, watching the waves dance under the moonlight. The soft murmur of the sea was a soothing backdrop to their conversation. Imagine if we could do this every day. Sarah sighed contentedly, her gaze fixed on the horizon. No work, no stress, just the sea and us. Mark nodded. That would be the dream, wouldn't it? They sat in comfortable silence, each lost in thoughts of a life far removed from the pressures of the everyday. As the clock neared midnight, they decided to head to bed. I'll just check on the kids, Sarah said, her voice a whisper in the quiet house. 
She found Alex in his room, headphones on, lost in his music. She smiled softly, watching him for a moment, before moving to check on Emily. But Emily's bed was empty, her room silent and still. A surge of panic rose in Sarah's chest. She checked the bathroom, then began frantically searching the house, calling for Mark. Mark, Emily's not in her bed. Sarah's voice was tinged with panic. Together they searched, calling Emily's name, but there was no response. Mark, his heart pounding, stepped outside, scanning the darkened beach. There, in the distance by the shore, was a small figure. Emily. He shouted, relief and fear mingling in his voice. They raced towards her, finding her standing by the water's edge, staring out into the darkness, her gaze fixed on the distant wreck. Emily, what are you doing out here? Do you have any idea how dangerous this is? Sarah's voice trembled with a mix of relief and fear. Emily turned to them, her eyes distant. Someone was calling my name, she said, her voice barely above a whisper. Mark and Sarah exchanged a look of disbelief and concern. They quickly ushered her back to the house, firmly telling her never to wander to the water in the dark again. Once inside, with Emily safely in bed, Mark and Sarah sat in the living room, their minds racing. Do you think... do you think it has anything to do with the wreck? Or the footprints and the wet bed? Sarah asked, her voice laced with worry. Mark ran a hand through his hair, his expression troubled. I don't know, but this is starting to feel wrong. Maybe it's just a series of strange coincidences, but... But what? Sarah pressed. But maybe we should consider leaving, Mark said reluctantly. I don't want to overreact, but I can't shake this feeling. Something about this place isn't right. They sat in silence, the weight of their decision hanging heavily in the air. The once peaceful beach house now felt charged with an unseen, unsettling presence, as if the echoes of the past were reaching out to them from the depths of the sea. Chapter 4 Shadows on the Shore The next morning, a sense of foreboding filled the air as the Anderson family awoke. Once again, wet footprints adorned the floor of their beach house. This time, however, there were multiple sets, weaving a chaotic pattern in and out of the rooms. This is too much, Mark declared, his face etched with concern. We'll spend one more day here. If anything else strange happens, we're leaving. Trying to push their worries aside, the family headed to the beach, determined to enjoy what could be their last day in this eerie paradise. In the middle of the day, the tranquility was interrupted by the sound of a moped approaching. A small vehicle with a box attached to it came into view, pulling up near the house. Sarah watched with a mixture of curiosity and caution. Should they be here? She asked Mark. Yes. He replied. They deliver fresh supplies every other day. That was part of the deal, so we never have to leave. They greeted the delivery man, introducing themselves as he unloaded boxes of fresh food and other necessities. His name was Joe, and he had a friendly, easy-going manner. So how do you like the house and the beach? Joe asked, making conversation as he handed over the supplies. It's beautiful here, Sarah said though her smile didn't quite reach her eyes. The conversation inevitably turned to the wreck visible from their beach. Joe leaned against his moped, a serious look crossing his face. You know, on certain nights, you can hear the voices of the drowned, he said in a hushed tone. There are rumors that they come to the beach at night, reliving their final moments, being drowned over and over again. The family exchanged uneasy glances. Joe continued. They say the captain of the sea's lament sunk the ship on purpose, wanted to crash it and take everyone down with him. Mark and Sarah felt a chill run down their spines, the children's eyes wide with fear. Why would he do that? Alex asked, his curiosity peaked despite the fear. Some say he was mad, others that he made a pact with dark forces. But whatever the reason, those souls haven't found peace. 
They say you can feel them, especially on nights like tonight, when the moon is full and the sea is restless. As Joe drove away, the family was left to ponder his words. The beach, once a symbol of relaxation and escape, now felt like a boundary between the living and the spirits of the past. That evening, as they sat in the house, the sound of the waves seemed louder, more insistent. Outside, the full moon cast a ghostly glow over the beach, and the wreck in the distance looked more ominous than ever. Mark and Sarah looked at each other, the same thought unspoken between them. This was no longer the idyllic vacation they had imagined. The echoes of the past were too loud, too close, and they feared what the night might bring. Chapter 5 A Light in the Darkness On the porch, under a starlit sky, Mark and Sarah sat together, each nurse in a drink. The sea spread out before them, its vastness a canvas of tranquility and mystery. The gentle sound of the waves was a soothing serenade, contrasting sharply with the turmoil of the past days. Maybe we're just not used to this, Mark mused, his eyes reflecting the moonlit sea. Our lives have been a constant cycle of work and repetition. Like those poor souls on the ship, reliving their fate day after day. Sarah nodded, her gaze lost in the rhythmic dance of the waves. We're caught in the monotony of our daily lives, working ceaselessly just to snatch a week or two of freedom each year. That's not really living, is it? Their conversation wandered through the parallels between their lives and the tragic loop of the shipwreck's lost souls. The idea of breaking free from their own repetitive cycle seemed both alluring and daunting. As they delved deeper into their thoughts, a strange phenomenon caught their attention. A greenish glow emanated from the direction of the wreck, casting an eerie light over the water. What in the world? Sarah whispered, her eyes wide. Mark squinted, trying to make sense of the sight. It might be natural, like the northern lights. Bioluminescence, maybe? He tried to sound logical, but the bizarre luminescence near the haunted wreck sent a shiver down his spine. Despite the odd occurrence, the night passed without incident. The gentle sounds of the ocean and the distant call of nocturnal birds were the only disturbances in the peaceful darkness. However, the next morning brought a return to the unsettling mysteries of the house. Once again, wet footprints meandered through their temporary home, more numerous than before, a silent testament to unseen visitors. Despite the beauty of the place and the peace of the previous night, the constant strange occurrences were taking their toll. The glowing wreck, the unexplainable footprints. It was becoming too much. We should leave today. Mark finally said, a decision forming in his mind. This place, its beauty, its mystery. It's enchanting, but it's not right for us. Sarah nodded in agreement, a mix of relief and disappointment in her eyes. They had sought a break from the monotony of their lives, but not at the cost of their peace of mind. As they prepared to pack their things, a sense of unease lingered. The echoes of the beach house's secrets were whispering to them, as insistent as the tides. Chapter 6 The Storm and the Spirits With their belongings hastily packed, the Anderson family prepared to leave the beach house. As they loaded the car, Sarah's voice was tinged with urgency. We need to hurry. There's a storm coming, I heard the weather report. The heat and humidity are just right for a tempest. As they began their drive, the familiar path leading from the house had vanished, now obscured by dense brush and overhanging branches, as if nature itself conspired to keep them from leaving Mark stopped the car and got out, intent on clearing the way, but the vegetation was impenetrably thick, as if the trees had intertwined overnight to seal their exit. Just then, the skies opened up, unleashing a torrential downpour. Rain pelted down hard, driven by powerful winds, as Mark struggled against the elements, attempting to clear a path. Let's go back to the house, Sarah yelled over the howling wind. We can wait out the storm and leave afterward. Reluctantly, 
Mark agreed, and they retreated to the relative safety of the beach house. Inside, they watched as the storm raged on, the winds howling like angry spirits, the rain lashing against the windows, the hours ticked by, the storm showing no signs of abating. Night fell, enveloping the house in darkness, lit intermittently by flashes of lightning. As Mark gazed out at the sea, his eyes caught something that chilled him to the bone. On the shore, illuminated by the storm's eerie light, were greenish glowing figures, ethereal, almost otherworldly. They stood motionless, gazing out to sea, a spectral reminder of the shipwreck's lost souls. This is impossible, Mark whispered, his voice barely audible over the storm. Sarah joined him at the window, her eyes widening in disbelief. Who are they? She asked, her voice a mix of fear and fascination. I don't know. Mark replied, his mind racing. But we can't leave. We need to lock the doors. As they secured the house, the reality of their situation set in. Trapped by the storm, with the haunting presence of the drowned just beyond their walls, the night stretched before them, filled with uncertainty and fear. The terror of the night had just begun, and the Anderson family braced themselves, wondering what other secrets the beach house and its ghostly shores might reveal. Chapter 7 The Captain's Lament With their hearts pounding, Mark and Sarah bolted the doors and reinforced the windows, their eyes darting to the shadowy figures outside. More and more of the drowned appeared, their faces etched with the agony of their last moments. As they stared out towards the shipwreck, a chilling shift occurred. In unison, they turned towards the house, their waterlogged faces contorted in pain and despair. They're coming this way, Sarah whispered, fear tightening her voice. Together, they checked every potential entry point, ensuring they were as secure as possible. The figures outside, their movements slow and deliberate, began to converge on the house. The sound of their hands, wet and heavy, started to pound against the doors and windows. Huddled together in the living room, the family clung to each other, the terror palpable in the air. The relentless banging seemed to go on forever, an echo of the drowned's eternal torment. Then, as suddenly as it had started, the banging ceased. A heavy silence fell over the house. Mark cautiously approached the window, his heart racing. Gently, he pulled back the curtain. And there, just on the other side of the glass, stood the captain of the sea's lament. His eyes were hollow, his face a ghastly visage of a soul lost to madness. He was known in the legends as Captain Ellis Morgan, a man whose mind had been shattered by unseen forces. As Mark's eyes locked with Captain Morgan's, he was suddenly engulfed in a vision of the ship's final moments. The sea's lament was a scene of utter chaos and horror. The passengers screamed and cried, their voices a cacophony of terror, as Captain Morgan locked himself in the bridge, his mind assailed by ghostly whispers driving him to madness. In the vision, Mark could see the storm raging around the ship, the waves monstrous in their fury. Captain Morgan stood at the helm, his eyes wild, muttering about voices and a dark pact that demanded the souls aboard. The passengers banged on the door of the bridge, pleading with him, but their cries fell on deaf ears. As the ship struck the rocks, the scene turned even more terrifying. The ocean swallowed the sea's lament whole, dragging everyone into the abyss. The last thing Mark saw in the vision was Captain Morgan's face, twisted in a grotesque smile as the sea consumed him. Gasping for breath, Mark staggered back from the window, the vision fading, leaving him in the dimly lit room of the beach house. Sarah rushed to his side, her eyes wide with concern. We have to get out of here, Mark managed to say, his voice shaking. Whatever is happening, we're not safe. But outside, the storm continued to rage, and the drowned still surrounded the house, a silent, ghastly vigil. They were trapped 
with nowhere to run, and the night was far from over. Chapter 8 Into the Abyss Panic seized Mark as he realised Emily was missing. Where's Emily? He shouted, his voice a mix of fear and desperation. As he scanned the room, the figures outside began to dissipate, like mists fading in the dawn. But when they looked out the window, the glow of the wreck in the distance was unmistakable. They've got her. I know it! Mark said, his voice strained with certainty. What can we do? Sarah's voice trembled, her eyes wide with fear. I'm going out there. Mark declared, determination stealing his voice. To the wreck. Sarah tried to stop him, but he looked at her, his resolve unwavering. Our little girl. He said simply, understanding the depth of his resolve, Sarah nodded, tears in her eyes. Mark hurriedly unpacked his paddleboard from the car and slipped into his wetsuit. With a final look back at Sarah and Alex, huddled together on the beach, he pushed off into the dark, tumultuous sea, paddling towards the eerie green glow of the wreck. The night was oppressive. The sounds of the storm and the sea melding into a haunting symphony. As Mark paddled, he peered into the depths below. There, in the dark water, the greenish, ethereal images of the drowned stared back at him. Their faces, a canvas of doom and sadness, seemed to watch him with a mix of curiosity and despair. Despite the fear gripping his heart, Mark paddled on, driven by the singular thought of finding his daughter. The wreck loomed closer, its ghostly light a beacon in the unforgiving night. Each stroke of his paddle brought him nearer to the unknown, to the heart of the mystery that had ensnared his family. The sea swelled around him as if trying to dissuade him from his quest, but nothing could turn him back. Not the storm, not the drowned, not the chilling depths of the ocean. Somewhere in that haunting glow lay answers and Mark prayed, his daughter Emily. Chapter 9 The Captain's Ultimatum As Mark reached the shipwreck, his voice echoed across the churning sea. Emily. A portion of the ship jutted above the water, a ghostly silhouette against the dark sky. In response, a faint cry pierced the darkness. Emily. Mark called again, his heart racing as he moved towards the sound. There, across a broken span of the wreck, sat Emily, her small form barely visible. They grabbed me, Daddy, she said, her voice trembling with fear. I've got you, baby girl. Mark reassured her, his voice a mix of relief and determination. He leapt across the gap between them, reaching out to grab her. Just as he was about to reach her, a voice from behind stopped him cold. Take her back before he sees you. Rasped the voice of one of the drowned, Mark turned to see the ethereal figure of a man his face bloated from the sea, seaweed hanging from his waterlogged form. Ignoring the warning, Mark grabbed Emily, preparing to place her on the paddleboard. But then, another figure emerged from the dark waters. The captain, Captain Elias Morgan, his presence malevolent and commanding. The captain's voice was chilling, filled with an evil that seemed as deep as the sea itself. You have a choice, he said to Mark his eyes gleaming in the ghostly light. Give yourself and your soul to the depths willingly, or I will take both of you, and then the rest of your family by force. A willing soul is so much more satisfying. The voices... The captain continued, his smile twisted and cruel. They want me to stay. They hunger for more souls to join our eternal torment. Mark held Emily close, his mind racing, the realization that the captain was bound by some ancient, dark pact, a hunger for souls that kept him and his crew trapped in this watery grave, filled him with horror. He looked into the ghastly face of the captain, then down at Emily, her eyes wide with fear. 
Mark knew he couldn't let this malevolent spirit take his daughter or any of his family. He had to make a choice, but the thought of sacrificing himself was almost unbearable. Yet, the love for his family, the need to protect them, surged within him. The storm raged on, the sea churning around the wreck, a tumultuous backdrop to the standoff. Mark, with his daughter in his arms, faced the captain, his decision weighing heavily on his heart, the fate of his family, the curse of the sea's lament, and the depth of a father's love all hung in the balance. Chapter 10, Father's Sacrifice. The beach was shrouded in darkness, the sea a vast expanse of uncertainty. Sarah and Alex stood on the shore, their eyes scanning the horizon for any sign of Mark and Emily. Suddenly, Sarah's heart leapt. There, she cried, pointing towards a shape emerging from the darkness. On the paddleboard, a small, lone figure sat. The board seemed to glide through the water as if propelled by some unseen force. Emily! Sarah screamed, her voice breaking with relief and fear. As Emily reached the shore, Sarah enveloped her in a desperate embrace. Where's your dad? Where's Mark? She cried, her eyes searching the sea for her husband. Emily, her eyes filled with tears, looked up at her mother. Daddy. She began, her voice trembling. He said to tell you. She paused, taking a deep, shuddering breath. He said, I will die for you because I cannot live with losing you all. You are my heart, my life. Take care of each other. Remember, my love for you is eternal, just like the sea. Sarah's knees buckled as the weight of Mark's sacrifice hit her. Alex, tears streaming down his face, wrapped his arms around them both. They stood there, a family united in grief. The sound of the waves, a somber melody to their heartache. Mark's last words echoed in their minds, a testament to the depth of his love and the magnitude of his sacrifice. He had faced the darkness, the echoes of the past, to save his family, choosing to give himself to the sea's cold embrace rather than lose those he held most dear. The beach, once a place of escape and tranquility, had become a memorial to a husband and father's love, a love so profound that it transcended the boundaries of life and death. The Anderson family, forever changed, held each other close as the first light of dawn began to break over the horizon, a new day born from the night's unimaginable sacrifice. Final chapter, the guardian of Echo Beach, Months had passed since the Anderson family's fateful vacation at the beach house. The seasons changed, and with them, another family arrived, eager to enjoy the tranquility of Echo Beach. The Johnson family, consisting of Jack and Linda, and their two children, Mia and Dylan, unloaded their car, their faces beaming with excitement. The beach house, unchanged in its rustic charm, welcomed them with open arms. They spent the day under the sun, building sandcastles and laughing in the waves, blissfully unaware of the house's sorrowful history. As night fell, they gathered on the porch, the sound of the waves a soothing backdrop. The children were full of stories from the day, their laughter a balm to the lingering sadness of the beach. But as the night deepened, a strange phenomenon caught their attention. Off in the distance, near the edge of the water, a faint greenish light appeared. As they watched, it took on a more defined shape, the ethereal figure of a man staring back at them with a melancholic gaze. The figure stood motionless, his eyes seeming to reflect the moonlight. It was Mark, bound to the beach by his sacrifice his spirit lingering where his heart had chosen to stay. Jack, sensing something profound and unexplainable in the figure's presence, whispered, Who is that? Linda, her eyes fixed on the spectral form, felt an inexplicable sense of peace. I don't know, but he seems... sad. In the moonlit night, the figure of Mark watched over the beach house and its new inhabitants, a silent guardian, tethered to the place of his ultimate sacrifice. 
His presence, though ethereal, was a testament to the enduring power of love and the profound depths of a father's devotion. The Johnsons, unaware of the full story, felt a strange comfort in the figure's presence, as if he was a protector of the beach and all who came to find solace in its embrace. And so, the beach house at Echo Beach continued to welcome visitors, holding within its walls the echoes of the past and the silent vigil of a father's eternal love. The sea, ever-changing yet constant, whispered its secrets to those who would listen, the story of a man who loved his family beyond the bounds of this world. Thank you for joining me on this chilling journey. If your thirst for the unknown and the unexplained is still unquenched, I invite you to delve deeper into the abyss of terror. Just beyond the veil of reality, another story awaits to send shivers down your spine. Dare to join me in the next video, where the unknown becomes known and the unseen seen. Until then, keep the lights dim and your mind open. This is Professor Shadow, signing off.